Strecke. Ja. So we're not going to practice? The beautiful city of Townsville in far north Queensland, one of the saviour cities of last year's WNBL season and the focal point of the hub in the Townsville Stadium, the venue for last year's WNBL Grand Final. For the Townsville team, though, it wasn't a great day for them, but they're back at home after winning their season opener against Adelaide last week, and they take on the Sydney Uni Flames, who lost week one against the UC Capitals, Sam Hargraves, and one time uh, NBL cha a WNBL Championship coach and also a WNBL Coach of the Year. Laurie Chizik, hello to you. Hi, Sam. I am really looking forward to this game this afternoon. I uh, can't wait for this one. Uh, two teams that have a lot of talent. Uh, a couple of important outs, though, for both. Uh, for Townsville as well, um, th there's a l just a real sense of what they might be able to do this year with the team they've got. Yes, they lost Shyla Hill, and we'll speak about her going to be uh, coached by her father, Shane, at the Sydney Uni Flames. But they've got a really uh, experienced lineup and some really talented imports. Well, they do, but I think we're going to see actually some very similar styles of play between these two teams. They both really like to push the ball up the floor, run the lanes, take early shots in transition if they're open, but if they're not, they get it through hands, they move good player movement and good ball movement, and they're both great defensive teams. And they're
Lauren Nicholson looks to have continued on in the way she finished off last year. She was all WNBL first team. Your pick for MVP this year, and she led them to scoring and um, just controlled the floor and the tempo of the game beautifully. She did. She got had 24 points, was named player of the week. But you know what? I, I really like the play of her teammates in Billings and Acuso, yeah. who both had double-doubles and, and were big factors in that game. But we can see Nicholson is just such a class act. She can score any way. She's from the three-point line. She looks to drive. She gets herself to the foul line. Uh, I would hope that she would continue on and hopefully have a great year and uh, back my tipping. Absolutely. We're going to get a first look at their other import, too. You mentioned how good, um, how good Billings was last week. We're going to get a look at Alicia Shug Sutton. Now she likes to go by the name of Shug. Uh, she was picked 36 in the 2020 WNBA draft. Was let go a couple of times last season by Washington. Finds herself as a free agent now, but big raps, a really good distributor with ball in hand. We're expecting her to run the point for Townsville. Yes, uh, she she turned 23 yesterday, so this is a, a little bit of a belated birthday present, her, her first game in the WNBL. She she did have a bit of a, a knee injury. She hyperextended her knee, so as a precaution, she didn't play last week. So I'm sure she'll be jumping out of her skin to get there and, and impress these home fans in, in Townsville. Uh, congratulations, too, to the referees, Vovo, Crowley, Long and Hanks. It's just the second time in WNBL history that we've had an all-female refereeing crew since we've moved to the three-person uh, officiating model. Um, that's significant. It is. Uh, I mean, how great is that to see and, and um, in our Premier League? Um, so congratulations to all three of them. So we look to be all set and ready to roll. Sydney Uni were leading at every change except for the last one last week against the UC Capitals. They got 14 points, they got uh, 16 points from Watts, who's not playing. Froling in her first run for Sydney was had 13, Mansfield 11. So where are their points going to come from for you, Laurie Chiswick? Well, I think Shyla was pretty quiet in that first game, so I expect much bigger things. And this is like playing against her teammates, playing against the crowd that loved her last year. Look at the early start, Sutton providing straight away, import to import, Billings the finish. That's a good way to come out in your first game, first touch. In fact, it was Akuzo, I believe. And you mentioned both her and Billings having double-doubles last week. They did a lot of heavy lifting in the paint and you're expecting the same. It's a really good duo that they've got there. Well, they do. They both got size, but they also both have mobility. And, you know, we see Akuzo trying to post up there. Didn't, didn't, get the, didn't get the ball, but certainly is a presence in there every time down the floor. Sutton again pulling up from the elbow and just like that. So contributing straight away to the first and second bucket with a providing or scoring herself. Good start for Townsville, Laurie. That's a great start, and the fans are loving it in this new venue. Looks good, doesn't it? Mansfield thought about the shot. Wrap around, will kill rolling, little bobble there, but now into the paint, and just can't get the kind work off the glass. Offensive rebounds are worth their weight in goal. Purcell getting it. Mansfield unable to bury the three. She's at 35% three-point shooter over her career. So we know that that shot will be one that she relies on. I think straight away you can see the work ethic of Kalani Purcell just getting her hand in there to create that second chance opportunity, going after those old boards. So first touch for Heel. Mansfield guarded by Sutton, finds a way in, the finger roll, and again an unkind bounce, but again offensive glass, Purcell just lost the handle, Sutton threw it back in. I think we'll find that's a Sydney Uni ball. They've had a couple of good looks, they just haven't fallen, they just need to keep and persevere. Froling accepts the inbound, back out to heel. Just slowing the tempo, nice little crossover work. Going at Nicholson, the shot doesn't go. So just unable to get anything happening at the moment, yet to score Sydney, they're down by four. Nicholson almost coughed that up, little hand on that. They give it back up to Sutton to set them up. Screen came from Iacuzzo. Another nice move inside. 
unfortunately the left hand didn't go, but it'll be a Townsville ball. Yeah, a little sneak dribble coming off of that on-ball pick, and uh, I can tell she's a classy player. Nicholson, 24 points last year, player of the week, heard Laurie, and then that move inside, just a bit too much, from one side to another off the glass. So 4 nothing start for Townsville. It hasn't been a happy hunting ground for visiting teams. Hill, the opening three. And you said that, Laurie, that they're going to need to get more points from her, and she delivers with an opening triple. I wonder if there's any fans there that gave Shauna a little clout just because they liked her so much from last year. Well, Kuzo couldn't get the finish, but that combination with Billings again coming to the four and Purcell running the floor hard. Gets on the end of it and gets... Sydney's first points in this game. I think, as I said, Kalani Purcell is really underrated. She played at Melbourne Boomers for a number of years and always came off the bench behind some very arguably great um, bigs in Kayla George and, and, and Magnabor, but um, she can shine now with Sydney. Billings, nice move inside, just falling away in the paint. That's something we saw a lot of Billings last week was her ability to put the ball to the floor, get to the rack and finish strongly. And here she does the same in this game. Heel penetrates the fine of Purcell was fantastic. Really good movement, really good vision by Shiloh on that pass to, to Kalani. By Kuzo. Named in the Opal squad for next year's World Championships. We'll get your thoughts on that squad after the bronze at the Asian Cup, a disappointing Olympics. You've been in and around that Opal setup in your career, Laurie. What did you make of the, the squad that they put together, four of them uh, playing in this game alone? Yeah, I, I like the list. I think it was, you know, I don't think there was anybody that was really missed out gives a lot of people the opportunity to to show what they can do in the WNBL season. Sandy Brondella made it clear that, you know, she would look at players because they don't have much preparation for that. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was a, a good, a good comprehensive list. So Sydney have come back hard here, 7-0 run. Just a bit of a moving screen there for Akuzo. Really need to keep your feet set and not move your hips at all. Mansfield just got caught up in it and a, a block was called. So on pretty even terms now after the strong start from Townsville. By my calculation, I think it's a one point lead to Sydney. That was really good on-ball defense sliding yeah. through there, but the referees are calling it a certain way, so players have to make sure they adjust. Nicholson. Around the back, move was good. The defense was even better. Well, we, we, we knew this would be a very defensive battle between these two teams, and the coaches have drilled them very well. In fact, I, I talked to Shane and I mentioned to him how great I thought their defense was in the first game and they're going to have to bring that today. They looked really physical, didn't they, last week against UC Capitals. I mean, they, they, they really wanted to have that kind of muscling presence. As Ikuzo takes a seat. So we're just getting confirmation of, of that score. Unless one of those early buckets for Townsville was waved away, we'll get confirmation of that. 7-4 is the score we have at the moment. Heel drew one into Purcell. Early bucket. Getting in on the act is Rowe. And Froling rather. And a foul called off the inbound. That's a lot better ball movement. That was a bit of a feature of the game last week. Throwing the finish there. Another one of the Opal squad members named over the last week. Well, so far we can see tonight, Sydney are playing much better team basketball. They only, they didn't have that many assists last time they played against the Caps. So they really have rectified that. Nadine Payne into the game, making things uncomfortable for Throwing. She couldn't finish that shot. 
Now Sutton will set them up again. They've looked a lot more dangerous with her as the floor general, Laurie. Yeah, so we know that she's a, a point guard that's pass first, score later. So if you're a teammate, if you're, you're open, she's going to find you the ball and get it to you. Okay, so 9-4, that score is right, we've, we've been told. It was must have been one of the early buckets that we didn't pick up on that was waved away for this Townsville start. So Sutton and Billings, the scorers so far. We'll take a time out, 4.49 on the clock. Sydney have settled after Townsville probably started the better, Laurie. Well, they haven't. I, I think both teams are just sort of feeling each other out, you know, looking at matchups, seeing uh, who can do what out there. And Sydney certainly, to me, looked like a much more comprehensive team than they did two weeks ago against the Caps. Townsville, I thought last week, they, they looked the much more comfortable of the two teams against Adelaide. And so they just need to take a deep breath. I'm sure that's what Shannon's talking to them about right now, setting up some offensive things. And Shane would be saying, you know, great job, keep that defensive pressure up, get them out of their rhythm, which they've done a great job of. It was a three-point loss to UC Capitals last week, but as I said, they led at every change except the one that matters most uh, at the end. So they would probably feel like that's one that they really let slip, given that they did control the tempo of the game for most of it. Just that third quarter where the experience of the Capitals came through and were able to get UC into a, a winning position. Well, we have to remember that for Sydney, they only have three returning players from last year. So they've got really a brand new squad, a brand new coach. So it is going to take them a while to, to settle into things. The fire implementing a full court press. Good crowd in attendance too at this fantastic new facility. Heel, ball shooing around, option in the corner. Mansfield didn't take the shot. That won't go. Here's the corner three. That's no good either. We're seeing a lot more confidence in the WNBL to put up those long range shots. The way that the game is changing all around the world, Laurie. Again, a nice find, Mansfield, Purcell gets the kind roll. 11 to four, starting to stretch a little bit. Sutton controlling the floor. Her and Nicholson looks a really good combination in the backcourt. Foul inside. Bonnie Purcell got caught behind Billings, and we know when Billings is aside and uses her physicality and, and it got, had great body position and held on to it, and Purcell was called with a foul. Billings gave a lot of headaches to Adelaide last week. Had the 13 rebounds to lead all comers. We see Beck Pizzi coming on the court to replace Purcell. Sutton, the outlet to Nicholson just to reset them and they go back to Sutton to set them up. The screen, Gee, the Avenue just opened up for her and she glides in. Oh, she looks such a composed and balanced player, Lori. Well, that was such a smart read. They, she forced the switch by, by using the re-screen and then saw that the, the tall Beck Pizzi was on her who wouldn't have the same foot speed and was able to take advantage of it. I reckon Billings got a piece of that three attempt from heel. So they get their first bucket in a little while. And they're almost double teamed. Yeah. Shook Sutton now. Born in St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. That's going to be an interesting combination and it'll give plenty of teams headaches. Sutton to Billings and she draws the foul. Well, I like the way that Billings, when she caught the ball, she just ripped it low and went strong on her left-hand side and caught uh, Keely Frawley just a little bit off balance. So 11 to 6. Purcell leads the Flames 
with six points. Heel has the three. Billings is somebody you don't want to foul. She's uh, a great foul shooter. Shot almost 90% last week and uh, and gets herself to the line a lot as well. Did I hear Corbin say that she was caught up in a hotel quarantine fire? She was. While she was waiting to clear protocols. That's a good early bucket for Dungey. That'll give her confidence and world a good only one bucket in open play last week. She gets her first. Sydney with a six point lead. On the trail, Billings was coming, but another foul. So again, we see Dungey using the screen and then getting a re-screen and using it again, which is causing some confusion to the Flames as how are we going to defend this? So we're going to talk at half time about the just the strength of import talent that we've got this season. Really exciting. WNBL widely considered the second best league in the world. Well, it just it, it just adds another dimension to what we see on the court, and it, and it lifts our Australian players too, and and. Uh, you know, it, it, it helps it helps these imports as well to improve their game and then be able to take it back and, and to the WNBA. So it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. Oh, that's physical. It's been a feature of this game. Desperation there, Sutton. As she's, as she's going to the floor, she's pointing, referee, it's this way, it's our ball. So she seems a real competitor. She does, well. absolutely. She's going to bring them down the floor. Billings looks to provide the screen for it. Four years with Atlanta in the WNBA. That corner three just... Rolling out, Payne. And now Reed, Stephanie Reed checks in, and she can't believe that call. Steph did so well to stay in front, didn't she? Well, Stephanie Reed was in the starting lineup last year, uh, last week when Sutton didn't start and was injured, and she did a fabulous job of just dogging the players making some great assists, and um, she was impressive. They're just not letting Mansfield have an open look from outside the arc, are they? They really seem to respect her shooting. And speaking of respecting shooting, Beck don't know if you want to leave Beck Pizzi all alone outside. No, she's got a nice three-point stroke. We know that from, from the past, and, and so you've got to make sure you take that away from her. There's that combo again, Sutton to Billings, and draws another foul, and will go to the line for the third time in this game. So Sydney still holding sway, 16 to eight lead. That was a nice quick release by Beck Pizzi. Normally just a 22% three point shooter. So the margin back to six points now. Billings is picking up this week where she left off last, has six points already after having 15 against Adelaide. Chelsea Dungey the three. Just looking in for all money. Billings the rebound and showing her versatility running the floor. Big collision, no call. Three to beat. Oh, that's a delightful find. Mansfield to Pizzi, just held it for, to, for the right, exact right moment, Laurie. She did, and Pizzi had to really um, sprint up the floor and, and get ahead of her to be able to get that pass and finish strongly. So this is Reed. Thought about the shot, back out to Nicholson. She gets a screen from Payne and then Drew to Her well to shut down the lane as the shot clock expires. Sutton can't connect. 
the Sydney, corner three. Sydney, I'm impressed again with their defense. They're really making Townsville feel uncomfortable out there. They're not in any sort of rhythm. Well, you can see that Mansfield wanted Purcell, but just lost a handle on a ball, and then another desperate attempt from Reed to lock that up. And for those who don't understand, when we see the jump ball now, Laurie Chiswick doesn't actually mean that we're getting a jump ball. No, we've got our possession arrow, and we've had it for, for a number of years now, and, and so whatever way the possession arrow is, that's the team that gets the ball with the same amount of time on the um, shot clock left if it's the same team. So we wanted to know where Sydney's scoring was going to come from. They've really done a good job of spreading it around. Pizzi the five, Purcell six, a couple to Dungey, Froling, and Heel's got the three. So they're going to have to do it by committee with Stephanie Watts cruelly ruled out for the season after dominating in the opening game of the season. Gee, don't they have a good connection? Mansfield and Purcell. Purcell just not being able to drop the shot. So this so. will be the last shot of the quarter. In Sutton's hand. Payne left her wide open. Oh, that's a great find. Just cutting back to the bucket. Finds Billings patience there from Nadine Payne to close out the quarter and cut the margin back to six points. Just early impressions of that first stanza, Laurie Chiswick. Well, I just want to mention Nadine Payne on that. That she made that pass look easy, but she showed a lot of poise. Shot clock sticking down, end of the quarter, just to get the right arc on it, so Billings could jump and get it. So good way for them to end the quarter. Quarter time at Townsville Flames 18, Townsville 12. We'll be back after this. So back at Townsville Stadium, not the ideal start for the fire. They trail by six points. The Flames without the start. And we're just getting a look now at Coach Shannon Seabob. Never seems to lose his cool or, or he's such a composed coach, Laurie. He is. A, he always is very succinct with his messages. I think he relaxes the player. I'm sure inside there's uh, there's nerves or butterflies or whatever, but on the outside he's a very cool customer and, and uh, I think the players really respond to that and I'm sure whatever he's saying right now that they'll go out and execute in this next quarter. We're going to talk more at half time about the relationship between he and Shane Heal and then his relationship with Shyla Heal as well, that, that connection we'll investigate and dig a little bit deeper into at the half. But 18 to 12, Sydney, what stood out for you, Laurie, was just the physicality and the constant pressure of, of, of their defensive efforts. Well, I thought Sydney, again, were, were great defensively. But what I really liked was I thought they had a lot more ball movement, player movement, than they did in that first game. That first game, it was almost like one pass shot, whereas here, they actually look like a team playing together and their, their work rate's really high. They, um, you know, Kalani Purcell has gotten them some second chance opportunities, but I just like the teamwork that they're that they're showing right now. So a little bit of a different looking starting five this quarter for Townsville. And what they opened up the game with, Ikuzo comes back. Shook Sutton showed just how much of a class act she is with a couple of opening possessions. So they've got a little bit of work to do, Townsville. And they'll have first possession. Reed stays in the game, Nickinson to have a, a little spell. And this is interesting, they're going to have Reed to run the floor. And, and Nicholson actually out there. Reed. So they're going with a, a shorter lineup. Would that be to match the smaller lineup that Sydney have gone with, Laurie? Well, I think they're probably 
um, Billings played a lot of minutes that, that last quarter, um, you know, eight points for her outing. So she's probably just getting a little bit of a breather and they've gone a bit shorter. Froling, heel, what an early three. Froling, that's a nice step and just can't get the finish. Got the foul though. A little Euro step to get in. It was a feature last week for Sydney, but it, it really looks like Shane Hill's got them wanting to to pass, to not be too quick to take the shot, Laura. They're looking to find the open player, share it around a bit. Absolutely, way more ball and player movement. And I'm sure the message, especially with Watts going down, was everybody needs to step up. So we yep. need to do this by committee. Nobody's going to be able to do it on their own. And, and I think they're showing that um, so far what we've seen in this game. So got the second 70% free throw shooter, Keely Froman. Seven point Sydney Uni lead. Amazing that Nicholson after 24 points last week hasn't scored yet. Well, that is because of the defense. Well, we see a nice basket there, but the defense that they are playing on Nicholson, that must be a clear message. Keep the ball out of her hands and let somebody else score. Let somebody else beat us. Uh, Chelsea Dungy is just wearing Nicholson like a glove. Third assist for Shook Sutton. Well, Mansfield like that. Little crossover action. Just can't get the connection on the triple. Purcell, another offensive board. Bit of a mismatch in there with Keeley Frawling. Heel just went at Reed like she would have done many times at training last year. And got the win over her former teammate off the left hand. Last year's grand finals, of course, Townsville going down to the Southside Flyers who went down by 15 points to the Melbourne Boomers earlier on today. Or Sutton, just the hesitation step and then foul. She's got a lot of little tricks up her sleeve yep. and we've seen yep. a few of them already tonight. So I'm really impressed with what she's showing. Great basket by Shyla, just kissing it off the glass, nice and high. Lead seven points as Purcell takes a seat. It's Kalani Purcell, the Kiwi. Ooh. No good on the first. The Shook's up. We see Monique Billings is back in the game. Sutton gets a second. And if you're wondering why we're calling her Shook, it's, it's what she prefers to go by. It's a nickname her dad gave her. Given name is Alicia, but working for you were speaking to Coach Seabolt and said, what, what am I supposed to call it? That's right. <laughs> and he said, no, her preferred, she wants to be called Shug, uh, short for sugar. Now that came off hand, intended for Froling, ricocheted out. Pizzi, you couldn't make the shot, but looking interesting there that last week, Dungey would have tried to force that shot up, Laurie, but this time looked to find a teammate. Oh, Billings just so strong. Keely Froling wanted the offensive foul, nothing doing. And Billings is already up to 10 points in this game. She's very influential. The fact that she got her own. Heel almost banking one in, not sure if she called it. Nicholson pulls up in the long range two, can't get her opening point still. Froling crashes the boards and almost the pocket picked of Mansfield by Sutton. Oh, and that's just again, great distribution from Mansfield finding a teammate again in the paint and they get the foul. Yeah, good call. Nicholson was outside of the charge circle. And I love the fact that even though Nicholson isn't scoring, she's still having an influence on the game. Yep. Like that defensively, or just the fact that the players, the, the opposition have to pay so much respect and attention to her. Lauren Mansfield as well seems to be that, that kind of player that, yes, has the three-point weapon in her armory, but certainly always looking to find the open teammate. Holds onto the ball to the last possible second to release to a teammate in a better position, Lauren. Yeah, she's a quality, quality act, Mansfield. She's been in the league for a long time, and she's got that experience. This is a very young team that Sydney have, so 
they need the lights of Manfield. Uh, I mean, do we say Keely Froling's, a, a, you know, an experienced older player? She's she's still really young. They, they're just a he young. Just crammed team. a lot into a young career, though. They, yeah, exactly. Averages 3.29 assists a game, does Lauren Mansfield. And that's what, you know, Shane talking to him, he was he was very much about this is a young team. It's it's a bit of a rebuild. They have a three-year plan. They're really invested in the Flames. And, and it's about teaching, supporting, but still going out and believing you can win. And the way they're playing right now, why not? Yeah. So Chelsea Dungey on the screen there in the number 23, pick five in the 2021 draft. Big wraps on her. Didn't quite see it in their opening game against UC. Arkansas University. Well, I've certainly been impressed the way she's played her defense on Lauren Nicholson. Yep. Always a great way to endear yourself to new teammates. I'd imagine, Laurie, if, if, you're, if you're relentless on the defensive end. Billing, speaking of relentless defense, rolling is as physical as they come. Nicholson, can she get over opening bucket? Yes, she can. Opens her account with a triple. And that lead now is just one point to Sydney Uni Flames. She needed to get that shot off very quickly as Dungy was closing out to her. So really good effort by Nicholson. Rolling and off Mansfield. They're so aware of her getting an open shot for three, but now she shows she can take you inside just as well as outside. Mansfield's having a good game. Fourth point to go along with. Or opening points to go along with the four assists. Nicholson draws two. All alone in the corner, but just can't bury that is Nadine Payne. Offensive glass. Sutton hits the deck hard. Lauren Mansfield runs the floor. Pizzy scored one from that exact same position. First quarter can't in the second here. Got a foul called off the ball, Laurie. Yeah, I'm not sure I didn't see that. No, it will be a Townsville ball, Bobber. Looks of things as Mia Murray checks into the game. Co captain. Former Rachel Spawn medalist. Three time champion. Good player to get back after the birth of her son Sydney last year. Read the little head fake, found a way into the avenue oh. and found a way to finish on the left hand and goes to the stripe for an extra. That was tough. That was tough. We see here just that physicality. She absorbed the bump. Her eyes were up on her target and she was still able to finish that. Just that little shoulder dip to get the separation, Laurie. Oh, I thought she'd, uh, thought she'd been got given the foul call and the steal oh that's a coach killer Billings up to 12 points in this game now lead is just one point full court press by Townsville causing issues as a coach Laurie is that is that a little magnet board bang down moment <laughs> a bit of frustration you don't want to give him up there well give credit to Townsville that was a pretty tough full court press Heel can't score over Payne. Townsville back in front now after that steal and the finish from Billings. First time in front since the opening moments of the first quarter. Reed's got a taste for it. Payne's tried a couple of times from there. This time goes baseline. Can't get the kind bounce. Shot clock expiring. It's going to be a Sydney Uni Flames ball. I would have liked to have actually seen the ball go inside. I thought Monique Billings was open there uh, when they were using that on-ball screen and um, just didn't get just didn't get seen. Lauren Mansfield thought about the three. Good defence from Billings though. Here will pull the trigger. She's one of three now. Townsville by one, 
Reed again getting a nice look inside, and that's a really good finish with Broling bearing down. Well, I, when I was talking to Shannon, he said one of the great things about Steph Reed was that when she decided to sign with them again, she stayed in Queensland in the off season. So she played up there, she worked out with Shannon, and oh, look, it's paying off now. She's playing some great basketball. Broling got an open look. There hasn't been many of those in this game. Had an eternity to shoot and couldn't connect. Biggest three and a half left. Townsville by three. Again, what a find. Billings is causing all kinds of headaches in the paint. Payne finds her. She finds her 13th and 14th points. And they find a five point lead, Townsville. Well, we thought that might be a bit of an issue for Sydney with the height of Townsville. And, and it's not only Billings and Acuso, but you've got Nadine Payne in there. You've got Mia Murray can post up. You've got McFat McSpadden coming off the bench. All have got some height over Sydney. So it'll be interesting to see if Shane changes anything. Yep. Maybe throws on a zone and try and pack it in a little bit, make them shoot from the outside. But right now they're really getting hurt inside. And you speak of Lara McSpadden, had a great NBA 1 too. I think she was averaging about 20 points in that tournament. So they've got additional scoring to come off the bench if they want to call on that. But when you look at their side, as we're, we're looking at the vision from timeout, Laurie, it seems really well balanced, Townsville. If you could think of what they might be missing, what would spring to mind for you? Well, I'm not sure, because now that I've seen Sutton and what she can do, yes. um, I, I'm not sure that there are many pieces left in the puzzle. And they've got such a such depth in their bench, as we've mentioned already. And so when players come in and they make subs, it's not just to give those starters a rest, it's still to have another, have an impact on yep. the game. So this is their biggest lead of the game, Townsville. Plenty of time in this quarter to inflict more damage. And we did see this for Sydney last week, Glory, that every now and then the, 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 the little mental lapse, they, do, they did allow the Capitals to do it last week and they've allowed it here again, the run-ons. Well, you just can't do that against, you know, we, ha we have to remember that, that Townsville were the runners up last year. I mean, yep. they made the grand final for a reason. And, and a lot of those players are still there, the same coach. So they're really comfortable with each other. So we have to remember that, that a team like that, you can't, you can't have any fade outs. Dungy just can't finish on the left hand, but better shot selection. She's frustrated with herself. Oh, she left a couple out there. So Reed's had an impact, giving him a bit of a spark. And there is McSpadden on the court now. Goes back to Reed, or oh, could have gone back to McSpadden. Bit of a mismatch Cross there. Court. Murray for three, scored three of them last week. McSpadden offensive rebound and draws the foul. She, she probably should have gotten the ball a lot earlier yep. uh, when she had that mismatch with um, with Shida, but good for her to get that rebound and to go up strongly and draw the foul and send herself to the foul line. So McSpadden, 85% free throw shooter. And I've most it. <laughs> as Casey, as as John Casey said last week, the commentator curse still exists. Absolutely. Doesn't matter what sport either. No. <laughs> Gets a second. First points. To Lara McSpadden. Played in the 16-17 WNBL championship. They've got to go underground, Sydney Uni, such as the ferocity of the full court press of Townsville. Purcell back in. Oh, Dungey thought about the three. That was shut down really quickly. Heel. Just a long range two. Baseline no good for Purcell. McSpadden the rebound. Six point lead to the fire. Nicholson has been quiet, just like that on cue. She gets her second bucket, has five points now. I like that that was a no call. 
I thought Shyla played pretty good defense. I thought Nicholson went. I know Nicholson wanted a foul there and add one, but I thought that was pretty good. Physical stuff inside. Now that was a foul. <laughs> that was a good call. Chelsea Dungy off the pick and roll. Payne very physical, inflicting a bit of that. And Dungy will go to the line. Sydney need these foul shots just to settle them and, and not let this lead stretch out any more than it is already. So it's been a 13 point turnaround before these foul shots. They were trailing by five at the quarter time break. Now Dungy brings it back to seven, make that six. Just under two minutes to play, first half at Townsville Stadium. It's been an entertaining game so far. Three. Dungy defense is good, but got a nice screen from McSpadden. He'll make sure she shut Reed down. Nicholson had the head fake, and I reckon the shot clock beat her there. Again, another great defensive effort from Sydney Uni. Probably a little bit of over dribbling by Steph Reed there. She needed to either get it through hands or, or penetrate hard herself. Really put Laura Nicholson in an awkward position with a, a shot as the, as the shot clock buzzer went off. So Lauren Nicholson takes a little spell. Laurie Chiswick's tip for MVP this year. They did. Oh, and that's going to be a Townsville ball. Mansfield losing the handle. We don't often say that. Mix Batten's had an impact since coming on. Nicholson, uh, one of the Townsville players, one of two named in the Opal squad for next year's World Championships. WNBL first team last year. Shook Sutton's been impressive. Reed gets the screen. Now we've got a call. Was that an offensive foul on Steph Reed? It looked to have been. Unless it was off the ball, because McSpadden, there was a bit of jostling underneath. So inside a minute. This first half, a little touch. It's been a nice little back and forth between the two former teammates, Heal and Reed. That would have been every training session, day in, day out. Yes, they would know each other well. Oh, Heal almost losing the handle. This is a bit messy. Sutton goes down. That shot way off from Mansfield. And a loose errant pass. Dungy, little Euro step inside, blocked. Big block by Lara McSpadden. Oh, that's textbook, Lori. Well, it is, and you know what? It's always nice to see a bench player, somebody like McSpadden, come in and do those couple of really important little things and have an impact in the game, which she has done in these last couple of minutes. So Townsville still with that six-point lead to seesawing game. Billings has 14 points to lead all comers. Almost half of Townsville's score is attributed to her. Five apiece for Sutton and Nicholson. And they're doing it with a bit more of an even spread for Sydney Uni. Six points as Purcell had those in the first quarter. Five apiece to Pizzy and Heal. And four to Dungy. So 34 seconds left. It's been a good recovery from Townsville. Yeah, I, you know, Sydney came out really focused and ready to go, and I don't think it caught Townsville off guard, but they hadn't seen them, played them, so it just took them... I mean, same thing happened last week with, with Adelaide, too, so it's, you know, just took them a while to settle in, but once they're playing their style of basketball, they look really sharp. So we've got 34 seconds left in the half. It'll be a Townsville, Townsville possession. 
So Courtney Woods is on the court for these last 34 seconds. And the full court press, Reed to bring them up. All-time leader in three-pointers made, Woods, for Northern Illinois University. Four years there. Shook Sutton almost losing the handle. Now we'll go back at the rim. She has made some really impressive moves into the paint. Draws the foul on Mansfield. She gains her handles there. Three assists and five points in the game. And it's been a headache. She has, like, she's impressive. I mean, I thought that was pretty good defense. I thought she was pretty straight up. I think the refs called it that she might have just moved forward right at the, uh, you know, just at the last second. And that's probably when Sutton was almost hesitating in the air to go up and finish. So got both. Eight point Townsville lead. Time for one last 4-8 their attacking half for Sydney Uni. Marcel leads their scoring. Angie wants to take the last shot. Pulled up, and that's short. And that'll be it for the half. So Sydney, who led by five points at the quarter time break, now going at the half, trailing by eight. The fire, 33 to 25. They put on 20 points in that quarter. As we look at some of the highlights of an entertaining first half. Well, wasn't it get great to get our first look at, 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 at Sutton and didn't she put on a bit of a show? And the thing I like about Townsville right now is that Billings is dominating as we see here, her drive to the basket. But Lauren Nicholson only has five points and they're still getting the job done. So it's a real team effort. It's, it's all round and a lot of their points are coming in the paint. Neither team have shot the three ball particularly well, um, but Townsville right now just just really dominated that, that second quarter. We saw some good things from Sydney, certainly early on, but now Townsville have taken them out of their structures. So it was a 20 to seven quarter for Townsville. Stephanie Reed provided a little bit of a spark, some really strong moves inside. Good finishes as well. And there's the stats. What stands out to you on that page? Look. Well, as I said, the three-point shooting, either team, one from six and two from 13. So, you know, hopefully that changes for both teams in the, the second half. But that's pretty, pretty crucial at this stage that neither team are shooting it well from the outside. So there's a lot to improve in that aspect, but uh, as we've been looking at uh, the, the difference in the two teams this year, and we were wondering with no Shyla Hill this year, how that would affect Townsville. And when we, we see what Shook Sutton's able to do, um, with all due respect, it doesn't seem like they've lost a heap in that space, uh, Laurie. But the, the Shyla Hill story is a, is a fascinating one. Uh, reunited, uh, being coached again by Father Shane, one of the all-time greats uh, of Australian basketball. Um, the whole uh, basketball community were just over the moon when she was taken at pick eight in the 2021 draft. And then out of nowhere, Chicago let her go. And, and, and this was the response from her. Really classy. Um, didn't seem to drop the lip. Um, saw it as a learning experience and a, and, a, and a teachable moment. Wow, she was, it was, it was pretty hard. It was pretty harsh. Mm. Um, but I thought the way that she responded and, and the way she publicly, I'm sure she was really hurting inside, um, but the way she responded publicly was really impressive for such a young, such a young lady. And, um, you know, I think her goal of just becoming better and better now um, is fantastic to see. This is an area that she wouldn't need much uh, help in the, the three-point shooting, given uh, we know what Shane here was all about from outside the arc. But... Um, the Young Player of the Year last year and has been named in the Opals squad. Five points, uh, two assists. How have you seen her game so far and her start to the season? Well, I think she's, you know, she's been a bit quiet that first game last week and then 
She's done a few good things this week, um, but I'd still like to get her a little bit more involved. But, you know, she goes back a long ways with her, with Shane coaching her. So Shane was coach of the Southeast um, Queensland Stars team. And when Shyla was just 14, and so she was a development player with them and moved up the ladder and so was coached by Shane. Then she did some various other, went to Perth, went to Bendigo, and then found herself in Townsville under Shannon. And we know last year she had a breakout season, I think. Yep. 17 points, five rebounds a game, assists. She was sensational. Um, and so it was automatic for her, I think, to go back to Sydney where, where her dad was coaching her. But isn't it interesting that I'm sure for, for Townsville, the reason that she was there was because of Shannon and her relationship, his relationship with Shane. Now, you know these guys quite well, and this is a fascinating story uh, in regards to these two guys, but they are really close, the two coaches. They're really good mates, and you know, they, in fact, it goes way back to when Shannon was a player. He played under Shane when Shane was coach of the Southeast Dragons. Then he had a heart problem, went into coaching, went to the Sydney Kings. Shane became coach of the Sydney Kings, and he was his assistant. So it goes back a long way, and they phone each other. They talk about it. When they were in the hub last year, um, you know, Shane said that they, they talked, they, they talked about styles and plays and that. So. Um, it's great to see them both on court now. Shannon said he's no Shyla since she was four years old. So it's it's all mixed up together and it, it's fun to see. There's some great uh, family tradition all throughout uh, the WNBL and we've spoken a lot about the Frolings as well. But um, this Shane and Shyla Hill story is a great one. And to learn a little bit more about the connection with Shannon, I don't think it was a coincidence that she ended up there and, and the impact that he's now had on her with that breakout year last year. I'm sure there's a great appreciation from Shane and from Shyla towards Shannon. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and that's what you go... Literation was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then you go, you know, today's game where, of course, on the court, they're all going to want to be winning and, and doing the best. But, you know, they have... When I spoke to both coaches, they probably spent five minutes talking about each other and how great each other was as coaches and how great mates they were and how much respect they have for each other. So that was really fun to listen to. Well, another feature of this WNBL season is absolutely the calibre of imports that we're getting. We've already spoken about Sydney Uni Flames having three out of the top ten draft picks in last, uh, this year's WNBA draft. But from a Townsville point of view, we've got a really good look at their two imports. And Monique Billings um, and Shook Sutton today automatically combine for the first bucket. And Billings is leading all comers uh, in terms of scoring, but dominating inside, cleaning up the glass as well. Well, we saw last week against Adelaide how... Um, much of an influence Billings was. So now to combine her in there with um, Shug Sutton, they're impressive, the two of them. And I think Shanna did a great job of, of recruiting them and, and fitting them into his style of play and, and what he needed out there. So really exciting to watch both these players. And, and they've been great this first half of this game. Yeah, UCLA product is Billings and four years uh, at Atlanta and just came off her career best year. So brings over 100 games of WNBA experience. And for Shook Sutton, it was released twice in the one season by the Washington Mystics, um, was picked 36 in the 2020 draft. So for her, this is a real opportunity to put her name up in lights again and turn the heads of WNBA um, front offices. Absolutely, and that's why I say it's a win-win having somebody of her caliber play in the league. But for her, she can put up some big numbers. She can help this team climb the ladder and, and you know, maybe get into the finals. And, and she will get noticed, absolutely, because the WNBL, without question, is one of the strongest leagues behind the WNBA. Uh, and it's not just with these two teams that we're seeing uh, the impact of the imports, and it might even be one of the strongest import classes that we've had, Laurie, uh, but it's not just at these two teams. You know, we saw Sykes for uh, the UC Capitals last week um, was fantastic in the way that she... Known for her defensive prowess in the WNBA, but, I mean, offensively, she was just gliding through and scoring at will, and you've got Mitchell and Williams and... Uh, these players. Who's really impressed you so far? I know we're only a game or two in, but who have you really liked the look of? Well, we've seen Sykes for that one game, and how long is she? And just in that vision we saw earlier, her arms are so long, but Tiffany Mitchell, or, or sorry, yeah, Tiffany's come of age, I think. she Her first game, she was pretty quiet, and then last two games against Southside, she's just exploded. Lindsay Allen, we've seen her before. We like what we see with her. The Adelaide um, imports, I thought Shook was really good last week although yep. i have a question mark 
we didn't see her get to the foul line at all so you know is she capable of of really bumping bodies in inside but you know she's good and we're yet to see jackie young from purse so how exciting is that uh alan six of them nine from three-point land today uh, in the boomers win against Southside. 15 points it got out to about 20 that lead and she uh, there was one point where she just couldn't miss she was making it rain today in dandenong well, I, I was listening to the first half of the broadcast, and, and, and I, I remember Screeny saying she just caught it in rhythm. One, two, shot. She's just ready to score. And when she gets her eye in there, wow, we've seen her do it a couple of years ago, and um, she was impressive in the game earlier today. This is a couple of the highlights from the 15-point Boomers win over the reigning champ Southside Flyers. And this is exactly what you're talking about, whether it be off the dribble or off the screen, she just had her rhythm going. And a lot of it came in the second half. She didn't have that many in the first half, but isn't that nice to watch? And this is the one I said we caught. She caught it in rhythm, one, two, and whack, there it goes. Uh, and that Boomers team looks really potent. I mean, Kayla George, uh, you and I were saying before we went on air, Kayla George looks like she knows full well that there is the position of the best big in Australia up for grabs. Uh, and it looks like she's wanting to put two hands around that title and, and have that moniker. Well talk about all the imports and the impact they're having yep. well Kayla Francis could not have had a better start to the season even in the first game that they lost she has been very impressive and then the last two games 25 points today double doubles rebound I think she's averaging in her three games 20 points per game so she is really putting her hand up um, playing some great basketball and leading those Melbourne Boomers. Uh, it's not all sunshine, lollipops and rainbows, sadly, for our import. Stephanie Watts, who really impressed in game one against the UC Capitals, ruled out for the entire season uh, with a, a knee injury. It was the ACL. Um, she went up for a block shot in the final stages of, uh, of the game. But last week, as we know, 16 points for her, five rebounds as well. Uh, was picked 10 in the 2021 draft. And... I thought, we all thought, wow, what, we can't wait to see her full season. And sadly, it's come to a premature end. Oh, and again, talking to Shane, he said that she arrived in Australia early. She's been working on her game. She's gotten better and better. She's athletic. She's keen. She's, you know, just one of those and just a great person. So that was pretty devastating, especially given that Sydney actually... They had another import before Dungy came in, Odom, and she yep. had an Achilles injury and didn't make it out. So they've had a bit of bad luck, Sydney, but we wish Stephanie Watts the, the very best. She's getting her operation. She's having her surgery in, um, in Australia. I think her, her mom might be flying out. And so we certainly wish her well um, in her operation and her recovery. Well, absolutely, and it probably um, isn't great news for the LA Sparks, her WNBA team either, but uh, we're going to head back the Townsville Stadium. Good to see Santa. Always known to be a big WNBL fan. <laughs> and you just got to admire the courage of Santa. There is no summer outfit for Santa. There is just his regulation get up. That's commitment. Doesn't, you know, cut the sleeves off. <laughs> Maybe. Santa with glasses. That's new. Well, he's been around a while. I mean, the, the eyesight at some stage, Lori, is he's going to go. Fair enough. So what do we need to see uh, from Sydney Uni if they're to make their way back into this? We've been impressed by their defence. They couldn't quite get the cohesion and offence in the second term to the credit of Townsville. Last instructions being issued now by Coach Shannon Seabon for the Townsville side. But what do you want to see from Sydney? I think Sydney need to continue their defensive pressure and try and, you know, disrupt, be disruptive, get hands in the lanes. Force, make sure that Townsville don't get into any tempo because when they do, they're really dangerous. But offensively, they need to get it through hands. They need to continue to cut really hard and, and try and get some some drives to the basket, maybe get themselves to the foul line a little bit more, but, but keep that team play going. We just saw Kalani Purcell, who's got a really big job to try and contain Mo Billings. 14 first half points for Billings. So... Sydney with first possession. Froling, there's an outlet. Gee, this would be a dream start. But that's just off again. No look pass per cell. Froling then can't get the extra. Another offensive board. Dungy runs into a wall of Townsville singlets. But that was good ball movement. Those were two really good shots they got out of that possession. Billings a steal. Steps around. Only heel to beat. 
And that's as easy as you like. 16 points on the game for Monique Billings. Yeah, a turnover like that is just a killer, especially when you've just had, a, a, you know, some chances at your own offensive end. Biggest lead of the game. That's a nice move. Oh, Purcell would make that 99 out of 100. Mansfield picks the pocket. They get another chance. Froling from the strike. That's short. They're just rushing these shots. They are. They're, yeah, they're just sort of pushing them instead of shooting it and really following through. So is that nerves? Is that being a little bit anxious about where they find themselves? Well, I think that's down. a little bit of scoreboard pressure. They know they're down 10. I mean, but there's so much time in a game. 10, 12 points at this stage of the game. You can easily get that back. Aikuzo on the receiving end of a nice bit of service again from Shook Sutton. That's her fourth assist. The lead's now 12. Rolling shut down quickly by Nicholson. That's a strong move inside, but good defense. Ikuzo, sixth player of the year last year and part of the Opal squad. And now looking at a set the screen for Nicholson. Can't get the kind bounce off the steal. This game has been physical, Laurie Chizzy. Well, it has, and, and neither team have been going up and down now for a couple of minutes, and neither team have seen a whole lot of rewards. Fantastic year, wasn't it, for Aikuzo last year and rewarded now with international honours. Double-double in the first game. And that, look at that defensive pressure again. They come up with it somehow. Sydney and the shot clock expires. So Shane Hill with some real concerns about what's happening offensively for the Sydney Uni Flames team. Townsville's credit to Townsville, their defense is smothering right now and they're really protecting the paint. Sutton will just pull up easy as you like from there. So I love the pull up jump shot. You know, we talk about the three point shooting, the You're hard drives to the basket. Yeah, well, that, you know, coming off that off ball, it was so open and she took it and it was such an easy shot. Second bucket for Mansfield has been the provider. Not so much the finisher in this game, but four points and four assists for her. 12 points that margin again. This will be a Townsville ball. You can see Keely Frawling was in a drop situation, so she, so she had dropped off. Shyla Hill had gotten caught on the screen just for that fraction of a second, so she was wide open and she took it and she scored. Nadine Payne back into the game. We'll get a good look at a corner three here. It rattles out. Heel quickly, can she catch the defense on the back foot? Pulls up the three. Oh, their shooting percentage just continues to drop. The Sydney Uni Flames, and there's a really good find. Nicholson, Aikuzo the finish. Second bucket for her in this third quarter. Great job, Aikuzo, to just run to the point of the rim and be a presence there and, and be ready to shoot it when she got it. Again, this defense causing problems. Rolling beats two. That's a strong finish. Timeout call. Just a nice cross step on Sutton. Yeah, Kuzo came over and and didn't come over. Came over on time, but her body position wasn't quite right. But she looks like she's a little bit sore from that um, contact that was made. So 12 point margin. Pensive is the body language of Shane Heal. Understandably so. They had a five-point lead at the quarter time break. 20 to 7 second quarter. And now Townsville starting this one off the better. Or something. That's an, the first errant pass we've really seen from her. Rowe was the stealer and Froling was the finisher. Back to back buckets for Keely Froling. She's up to seven points now on the night to lead the Sydney Uni Flames offensively. Macuso looks to have recovered well, backs all the way in. Oh, Nicholson fighting hard, the co-captain. We'll get another look. Another the pick and roll, Billings, little step around. The defense was really good though from Purcell. And that's a bit of desperation from Froling. 
Tapped it back to Purcell. Mansfield just one to beat. Didn't want to take the shot on Billings. Purcell's got a mismatch if oh. Hill can find her and couldn't. She was yelling for the ball, arms wide open. Rolling can't get the triple. And that'll be a Townsville ball. And you had your arms out, Laurie. You I saw did. the mismatch underneath. Well, as a, as a player, when that ball's reversed or there's a pick and roll, you, you, you need to look inside. Give them a look. If it's not there, kick it on. But she was wide open with a mismatch. So the lead back to 10 points. Nicholson's had a quiet game by her own standard. Long range two is short. Oh, that's just, that's just grit. Just grinding it out underneath. Ikuzo's had a big say in this quarter. Six points in it for her. Yeah, those second chance opportunities are starting to build up and, and, and hurt Sydney. Gee, that will not please Shane Heal. Three on one, and the one comes up with it. Lead back to 12. Three-point loss to the UC Capitals in their opening game. Their second game, Laurie, we know, got postponed due to a positive COVID test situation. So we always knew they were going to be up against it this game. Yeah. But let's be, let's face it. They had a week off, which can be good, can be you know, a bit, you just want a bit of continuity, especially at the start of the season. They had the loss to Stephanie Watts, which. You know, given the impact she had in that first game, would yep. be, and everybody would just be devastated for her. You know, it's for her, for the team, for, for um, Shane, the program. And so you need to make adjustments, and they weren't that tall to begin with. Um, no. So up against Townsville, who do have some legitimate height, um, it's, and it's an away game. And this isn't a happy hunting ground for visiting teams, as we know. Townsville have a great record at home. The fire pit. Yes, 43-31. As Billings takes a seat, she's earned that. 16 of the 43 points are next to her name. Sutton's got nine. Fantastic first up game for her to go with three assists and four rebounds. And well, Ikuzo has been the story of this quarter. Three rebounds, six points. You know, for all the, the challenges that Sydney are up against, you still know that that somebody like Shane and the personalities that they have, they're still going to go into a game believing they have the chance to win it. And you have to do that. And whilst, you know, there's it's about teaching and mentoring. And, and if I could just see on screen there is Morgan Yeager is actually a player, but she's injured. Um, but they, because um, Shelley Gorman couldn't come up, they um, brought Morgan as a second assistant, which is fantastic to see, and it's great to see her talking to the players. Catch and shoot for the co-captain, Mia Murray. That's no good, but it's going to be a Townsville ball again. So just these repeat sets, if you like, in offense. As they continue to break down Sydney Uni. Sutton Nicholson to the left. Just wasn't quite balanced when she took that shot. And heel to bring Sydney down the floor. Little floater. She will have to get a look at their field goal percentage in just a moment. Frolings almost single-handedly keeping them in at this quarter. Nine points for her now. Now two of 16 from outside, 12 of 28 from the field. Strong move from Payne to muscle in Purcell the finish on the right hand four points for Nadine Payne and the lead still 12 for Townsville Townsfield hasn't looked to shoot the three she has looked to find Purcell does so again gets the bucket and the extra I wonder if Townsville are sort of thinking back to last week when they played Adelaide and Adelaide scored the last seven points of the third quarter and then went on to get back within one. So, you know, Sydney do, are doing a good job right now of just chipping away. So Mia Murray 
sits back down. So three-point play for Kalani Purcell. Another assist to Mansfield. That's six for her. No one in real foul trouble. Ikuzo has three. So too does Mansfield for Townsville and Sydney, respectively. Oh, strong collision. Sutton gets the screen from Billings, just frolling to beat, and that is not an easy task. Just got to heave it up, hoping by oh, Kuzo to get on the end of it. And she clearly frolling. Does she get enough kudos for her defence? Well, she's constantly up against bigger players. Yep. You know, and I think she does a great job of, of battling and fronting and pushing and, and um, you know, for her size and what she can bring. Mansfield, you'd think, would bury that just a bit long on that three. 35% just under three-point shooter normally. Listen, more Sutton had the step but just didn't have possession. Kuzo goes to work on Pizzi, rolling onto the left hand and rolling it in. That was a nice, nice spin move by Kuzo. Rowe almost finding Purcell underneath. They'll get possession. Wasn't much more that Rebecca Pizzi could have done there. No, no. Oh, Kuzo up to eight points in this quarter and for the game. Heel and Reed was a good battle at the time in the first half. Nice spinning move from Heel, but she's just having trouble with the finish. In this game, Mansfield off rolling on the trail. Gets two shots, can't get the two points. They've done that really well at times, Sydney, haven't they? Mansfield especially, just drawing the player, finding the open player, making movement to the bucket. Nadine Payne just needed to be a little bit further out to take a charge, but uh, Frawling did a great job of, of catching that pass. It wasn't that easy. So Frawling to make it a nine-point ball game, so back to single figures. Absolutely manageable. Two minutes to play in the third quarter. Drew one. Payne has one three-pointer to her name, not the second. In fact, she doesn't have a three-pointer, Payne. She's 0 for 4. Well, my goodness. Townsville are shooting 11%, Sydney 12% from the, from the three-point line. My advice would be... Put it away. <laughs> get inside, keep going inside. Or if you keep shooting them and you hit a few, then then start, you know, putting them up. But right now, neither team is looking proficient at all. Now, Shyla Hill was a 41% shooter last year, just 25% in this game. Chelsea Dungy's had her problems finishing, not on this occasion. The spin cycle was sublime. Seven points is the lead. That was impressive, and she showed a lot of poise there just to see what her defense was giving her and, and really nailed that spin move. Payne, uh, that was a, a pass, not a shot. Wanted Billings making a move to the hoop. And they lose it. Just that little hesitation step got her just a little bit of separation, Laura. She did. She really set up Nadine well for that. So they've got a sniff here at the moment, Sydney Uni Flames. Billings. Absolutely they do. On a little bit of a run here. Dungy, is that a charge? Yes, it is. Big smile on the face of Shook Sutton, her compatriot. Sutton not buying what she was selling. She pointed like she was going to go to the screen. It was a great... Came up wonderfully on the replay, Laurie. It did. Sutton just stuck with it. <laughs> she was pretty happy with that, and so she should be. That was great defense. So a minute to play in the third. It'll be a Sydney Uni inbound. And we see Michaela Cox on the floor for the first time this game. 
2015 16 Rachel Spawn, medalist, the grand final MVP of that title. Represented Australia at the 08 Olympics, the 06 and 18 Com Games. So that's experience right there. Nadine Payne got herself in an uncomfortable position around the world. Got it two extra goes off the backboard, if you don't mind, and gets the shot. Six points for Payne. Inflicting a bit of it on Sydney. Lead back to nine. Oh, Aaron pass from here, wanting Froling. Billings will finish this in the open court. She's up to 18 points, and just like that, consecutive buckets for Townsville. And they're back out to 11. Sydney want to make sure they get just one last shot up and don't give Townsville the opportunity to do anything. Only about a two-second differential between shot and game clock. Heel can't get the kind bounce, and they will get another chance here. Nicholson down the court for Townsville. Pull up for three. Oh, that would have really hurt. It was a pretty good look, too, I might add. <laughs> yeah, got a fair, fair look at it. So that was an enthralling quarter. The Flames got themselves back into contention. The Fire able to get a couple of late ones in succession to maintain an 11-point lead as we turn for home at Townsville Stadium. Stadium basketball fans, FIBA's flagship competition, the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup, is heading to Australia in September 2022. Over 10 action packed days at Sydney Olympic Park, 12 powerhouse basketball nations. They're going to battle it out for the world title. You can sign up for first access to tickets at womensworldcup.basketball. And Laurie Chiswick during the week, the Opal squad was announced and from what you told us during the call that you're pretty happy with the, uh, the, the outfit that's been assembled. Yeah, I don't think that um, anybody in particular has been left off. You've got your your players that were at the Olympics, minus a couple. Katie Ray Ebsru, we know, has retired. Um, and then some of the players that played in the Asia Cup, which were yeah. so, which was such exciting to watch the young up and coming players and, and they've been included in that squad. So Sandy Brondello can have a good look at everybody. They're not gonna have a lot of chance to, the, I think they'll have one camp um, before the world champion or before they um, head off to the qualifiers in February in, in Serbia. So um, it'll all happen pretty quickly, but great opportunity for some of these young up and coming players. Four of them in action here, Nicholson and Iacuzzo for Townsville and Froling and Heel for Sydney Uni Flames, part of that squad. A lot of people believing that Shyla Heel, after the season she had last year, should have actually been taken to Tokyo. That wasn't to be. So Sydney looking at an 11 point deficit, lovely crossover work from Heel. The kick out to Rowe, Dungey, this would really help. They, just can't connect on the yeah, it's a pity they didn't get that reward because it was great ball movement by the players finally hitting that open player and um, you know she had a really good look Payne gets another look oh, over five now for her from outside offensive blast though Billings double teamed and fouled 18 points seven rebounds for Mo Billings just Dungey reaching in there well, she knew she was going to take it up hard against um, Rebecca Pizzi, so uh, she thought she'd just foul her and uh, save that. Oh, that's a nice find. Just not being able to finish Payne, but Reed, elite vision. And Payne's going to go to the stripe. I actually like it when it, Nadine Payne is doing some things inside. That's where she's been most successful this game. She's 0 from 5 from the three-point line. Um, and all her points have either come from the line or, or inside look. So 
Why not? Why not continue that? And I heard Corbin tell you in the call of the Adelaide and Townsville game that you did that she was a 100% free throw shooter last year. 22 of 22, and then missed one of her opening two against Adelaide. Yeah, I blame Corbin completely for that. Absolutely, we all do. <laughs> uh, 53 to 40 now. And that's a pretty commanding lead for, for Townsville. So if you're Sydney, Laurie, you knew you were having success when you were patient with your build-up, looking to find open players, hanging on to the ball as long as you could, because Dungey's going to go to the line. Since that first quarter, though, when they were leading by five points, they seem to have rushed their offence for the main part. Well, th that's fairly true, but I think you have to look at it and you go, uh, I think it was a case of, yes, they came out and they were really patient and they worked the ball around, but I think Townsville definitely has found their form defensively and know, you know, got a feel of what Sydney were running and how they could defend them. And so they've taken them out of that comfort zone a little bit. Chelsea Dungey up to eight points. Four in her first game. Nicholson. Oh, that's way off. From She's off the known shooter. Today. It's going to be a Sydney ball. But Interesting, Nicholson, a 32% three-point shooter. He's just one of three. But one of eight from the field for her, so a rare off night for... Maybe it's the rings. Maybe it's the rings at the new venue. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to find some reason. Are you asking for an inquiry being launched? <laughs> Purcell released to Mansfield. The pain was hip to that. Little step back, tried to use the window to no avail. For Lauren Mansfield. Now, Reed had it knocked away by Purcell. It'll be a Townsville ball. 11 point lead. Still plenty of time for them with over eight and a half to play, Laurie. But it's a little bit messy right now for both yep. teams. Neither team have got any sort of rhythm or flow. Reed had an impact when get them back in front in the second quarter. Again, it's just patient, just navigating away to the paint and getting an open look from the left-hand side. She heard you, Sam. She heard you that she was having an impact early on, wanted to do it again. Up to six points now. Shyla here. Oh, that's a very good shot off the dribble. Uh -oh. oh, it is hurt. It did look like she shot a little bit off balance. Let's just have a look here. Yeah, it didn't land comfortably. No. It's going to be subbed out. Gee, they can't afford to have her. Yeah, Dad Shane saying, come off. It's just it's a long season. We'll take the cautious approach, but with no Stephanie Watts. Oh, that doesn't look good, does it? No, and they have a, you know, there's there's games, quite a few games coming up. They play um, Melbourne on Wednesday. Yep, and then Bendigo. Yep. But Funda Nasaglu is on. Oh, having court. a game is Steph Reed. Back to back baskets for her. She looks like she is just having fun out there. Yep. Terrier defensively. Taking her moments when they present. She's 4 or 4 from the field. Dungey crossover, step back, long range two. Oh, got the kind wedge. Don't often see the ball wedge between ring and backboard and, and, and you get the favourable. Yeah. Double figure points for Dungey. Billings has had a quieter second half, but just as I say that, she gets it off the tough angle and the extra at the charity stripe. It's a calf that they're working on there, the heel. Billings up to 20 points on the night. has been phenomenal, seven rebounds. That's actually what we saw happen with um, Lauren Nicholson in the fourth quarter last week against Adelaide. She subbed off and we could see her getting some work by the um, physio, a rub. Now, she said no worries, it was fine, but maybe, maybe it's had a little bit of an effect, I'm not sure. Billings up to 21 points now. 
Averaged 12.5 points a game over four years at UCLA and over 100 games in the WNBA with the Atlanta Dream. He's now an established star with Atlanta. Look at her shooting percentage, 21 points, and she's eight for nine, 89%. Oh, and blocking now. That's the defensive prowess. Denies rolling. Payne again, this time. Um, lip on her shooting radar as Shyla Hill back into the game and back in the buckets. I'm good coach. I'm good dad. Put me on. She's got 10. First miss, that was for Reed at the other end. And Heel got the field goal percentage back up to 40%. It's two of five from the field. Payne has tried that shot a lot. Thought better of it on this occasion, and that's why. Finds a way into the paint, and that's what you've been asking her to do, Laurie. Again, uh, she, she read that the closeout wasn't quite you know, she was a little bit upright in the closeout, was able to put it to the floor. Frolling can't connect on that triple attempt. So that lead, 13 points with just over five and a half to play in this game. It's getting away from Sydney here. They've got to get a stop and they've got to get shots. Payne back to back for her. Nice find from Billings and an even better finish from Payne. That's what I like. That's what I was talking about. Get herself inside. Get yourself to the basket. She's got 12 points, second leading scorer. Well, the thing is, is that for any player, if you're just not, you're going to have nights where you're just not feeling it. So find different ways to get involved. Slash to the basket. Put it to the floor. And that's what we see Payne doing this fourth quarter. We've spoken about it a couple of times, but... They look a really complete outfit at the moment, the Townsville. Well, when, when you look on the, la the, the last few minutes, who's had influence, it's been Steph Reed and Payne, and they're not even in the starting five. So that's what the depth is about, that you can make those changes. You can, you can, it, it's not about resting players, it's just about putting other players on that perhaps have a different skill set. We know how, you know, what a, a defensive just terrier is that Steph Reed and, and she brings that and, and she's got so much confidence right now running the show. And for Sydney, just three of 21 from three. Interesting that Townsville, one of 12 you spoke about, they look like they've listened to your advice and, and have thought the better of the long range where Sydney are continuing to pull the trigger. And you sort of have to, given the situation they're in, that they need to they need to score as quickly as possible, but... The thing is, too, is when you're undersized and you're you're not hitting from the three-point line, rarely are you going to get an offensive rebound. Um, so you, you better be... You better be making them. So just five and a half to play. Biggest lead of the night is 15 points now for Townsville. Heel. Half injury scare for her. Good defense from Payne, didn't allow any access. Mansfield to the elbow. Yep, rattles that one in. Nice rejection of the screen. The defense anticipated that she was going to use that screen. She just did a little crossover and pulled up. So they're just going to get defensive stops. Their defense was a feature in the first quarter. Here we go. Frolling again, making it difficult. Payne finally gets one from long range. I'm going to say she got her confidence from scoring inside. So now she can score outside. She's one of six <laughs> from the land of plenty. But hasn't she come to life in this last quarter, Nadine Payne? Up to 15 points. And now they've got a 16-point lead, Townsville. Really eager to see what Shulk Sutton was going to bring to the Townsville table, and we've been really impressed. That's on cue. The elite vision. Uh, Kuzo fouled, couldn't drain the shot. She had all eight of her points. And there's that three from Payne. Which <laughs> even she knew.
Akuzu had great position, front position, if the ball was reversed, which it was, and Sutton finding her on that pass. Came through the South West Metro Pirates. Queenslander played at the Asia Cup for Australia. And that will infuriate Shane Heal. Yeah. No end that they get the ball back. On a free throw. Akuzo double team baseline. Purcell harassing. Akuzo determined not to give it up. Purcell fuming about the call. It was great defense by by Kalani to come over. She she recognized that it was Shyla that she was going to have the mismatch on. So she's come all the way over to help. Just maybe was a little bit um, a little bit too aggressive. Not that she thought so. No. Players seldom do though. Laura, you know sure. that. So Ikuzo gets to go back to the line. The lead's 17 points. She's got nine to her name after 12 points and after 13 points and 12 rebounds last week. She had a double double. This is the first. Hasn't had to do as much of the grunt work inside. Has the full rebounds. But it's Billings with nine. So Billings is one rebound away from consecutive double double games. 18 point lead. Biggest of the night. Heel. Oh, the pass was always on. Icuso saw it at the last moment. They'll get the ball back. It's just been that kind of night for Sydney. Never overcommitted by Kuzo, did she? Well, she didn't. And what was great is she kept that distance so that she could use her length. If Shyla went up for a shot, she carried that hand. There we go. Now they're starting to hit Mansfield. Her, that's her first three-pointer for the night, Lauren Mansfield. Wouldn't have thought I'd be saying that coming into this game. A known three-point shooter. That's a nice find. Oh, Kuzo had pain cutting. Just overcooked that pass a little bit. Yep. Michaela Cox getting some minutes to close out this game, the veteran. Frolling. Payne's defense has been really strong all night. So they'll go 2 and 0, you'd think. Or something drastic changes here, Townsville. They've got. Southside Flyers away, and then the UC Capitals. So a big couple of games coming up for Townsville. But they'll take a lot of heart from the fact that that woman, Lauren Nicholson's only had five, five points, points and yeah. Payne coughs it up again. Or oh, he'll almost trip by Cox. Attempting back-to-back -back triples. Mansfield couldn't score. And has Heel been hurt again there? Well, oh, that's that calf. So you'd almost think now, Laurie, if the game's beyond them, that you would take Shola out. Sixty-nine, fifty-four. Sutton calls the play. All blocked. Oh, and Froling the stare down too. Said, don't bring it in here, please. You've done that too many times. And Heel goes down again. They've, they've just got to make the substitution now, don't they, Laurie? Well, look, I don't think they can. Uh, they certainly can't win it from here. So I think you have to be smart about it. Yeah, that was almost collapsing on herself. It wasn't too much physical pressure. We know how we do know how tough Shyla is, so yep. and, and she wouldn't be the one wanting to come off at all. She no. would want to stay on there. We'll see if she gets subbed off after these foul shots. So she's got ten points. She's two of seven, two of eight for three, and she's up to eleven now. So equal leading scorer with Keely Froling, who's also got eleven. Sydney. So the lead is 13 now, and it's interesting that Stephanie Watts, their star import, at 16 points, and there is Shyla Hill going off, looking really proppy. 
So you don't want to take anything away from Townsville, but you do wonder what that scoreline would read if Stephanie Watts was playing. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't know, but certainly we saw what she could do in that first game. Sutton's jumper is off. But you know what? You have to move forward. You have to move forward quickly. You can't sort of, oh, what, what yep. if or, or that. So you, you can only work with the players that you've got. Frolling has had not a great night from long range, it must be said. She's over four now. But that's... She's not the only guilty party there for Sydney Uni. Well done, she's nice little knock away and again well they're just making things as difficult as they possibly can somehow Nicholson gets through now she sees Cox all alone as the shot clock expires they crash the board Sutton gets met hard in mid-air by Purcell and she cannot believe that she's been called for another foul trying to fight for a rebound just looked like a loose ball foul really yeah. I mean they were all going for it I yeah. mean I love the fact that even with this score line both teams are still going at it so hard Sutton's got the nine points and the five assists but also the five rebounds too and he's three or four from the line Nicholson takes a seat it's really been a great night for her, but she has provided. She's got three assists and her five points, and off night shooting just 30% from the field for Nicholson, who's over the journey of her career is a 46% uh, But I give credit to, to Chelsea Dungey yep. for, for that, having that sort of night. Um, I think she really focused on that defense. Katie Diebel getting some minutes to close out the game. There's a minute 39 left, and it's a 14 point Townsville lead. Rowe, long range up, won't go. And that, if I'm not mistaken, will be the double double. No, it won't be. That was Ikuzo. I was getting excited for a double double. No, Billings Apologies. isn't on the court anymore. No, she's not. Shannon Seabom clearly. Not too concerned by Pat's uh, stat Patty. So a minute 12 left. Rebecca Pizzi hit a really important three when they got rolling in that first quarter. Sydney Uni. And that was Purcell's fifth foul, by the way. So she has an early finish to her night. Nine points and nine rebounds for her. Two assists. Kalani Purcell. And that breaks, makes it a 16-point Townsville lead with just over a minute to play. Nakasoglu is normally a pretty good shooter. That's just off. Offensive glass was good though. Pizzy can't finish. It was Evans that got the offensive board. 40 seconds left. Pick and roll. Cutting back to the basket is good. You can see the youth of the Sydney team on the court right now. Oh, just not quite being on the same and stepping out. There was Katie Diebel, so they just collided with themselves in offense. Some of the younger Sydney Uni players who are getting some minutes. Shane Heal resting his starters. We've got the Melbourne Boomers up next at home. They are in ominous form at the moment, the Boomers. 15-point win over Southside today. Should be the last possession of the game. Payne get her second three-pointer. Yes, she can. Again, a nice big smile on her face. 18 points now for her. And that is the game. Comprehensive win from Townsville. 75-56, 19 points in the end. They trailed by five at quarter time. They led by eight at the halfway mark. And they were up by 11 as they turned for home. So a dominant performance from Townsville.
They lost the grand final at this venue last year at home. And they go 2-0 to start season 2021. 75 to 56 over the Sydney Uni Flames, who are now 0 and 2 on the year. Injury concern to Shyla Heal, a calf complaint, and no Stephanie Watts for the rest of the year. So some warnings, some danger signs there for Sydney. But as we look at some of the highlights, Mo Billings was phenomenal. 21 points, nine rebounds for her, and two assists. And Shook Sutton was ever the provider. Five assists, five rebounds, and 12 points for her first game in Townsville Colours. What impressed you about Townsville, Laurie? Well, I love the fact that four of their players were in double figures yep. and, and, and big figures. You know, Billings 21, Akuzo 10, Payne 18 coming off the bench and, and Sutton 12, as you mentioned. So, And that's all with Lauren Nicholson only scoring five points. And, and so to have your superstar be held to that and have others step up is, I really like that. And, um, you know, I think that will, you know, those, <laughs> I love it when players make a shot and get yep. really excited about it. It's so good to see. Well, that's what fans buy into, Laurie. That's, they, they feed off the passion that the players show and then give it back tenfold. And you can see that the percentage of three-point shooting slightly rose, but um, but not all that all that much. Turnovers not too bad, 13 each. Um, they basically took care of the ball. Uh, I think the Flames would still like a few more assists than 12. But yep. you know, overall, the shooting percentage for for the Fire was superior. They took less shots, but certainly their shot selection was probably better. So. Shane Heal was a world-renowned three-point shooter, and that 15% will uh, not please him. So you can just imagine what they might be doing at training this week. Sydney Uni Flames with the Melbourne Boomers, who shot the lights out today. Well, I think whenever you analyse a game and, and you, you look at those three-point shots, you look, were they good shots to take and they just missed? And that's OK, because you want to encourage your players to, to shoot it when, they op when they're open. Or was it just one pass and a shot, and, and that's probably not the best option to take? So, so they'll analyze that to see if they were taking too many, if they were out of the offense, if they were good threes to take. 75 to 56 in the end, Townsville fire against the Sydney Uni Flames. A good win at home as they do their warm down stretches, and show their appreciation to the Townsville faithful who rocked up on mass to see their team go 2 and 0. So some really good games tomorrow, Laurie. Looking forward to UC Capitals and Adelaide Lightning. I, I don't think we really saw what the Lightning are capable of in that first game. You called that game with Corbin Middlemass and there was a moment, there was a, a period of time uh, when they fought back into that game where you sort of got a glimpse of what especially that uh, backcourt combo might be able to do. Oh, they were great in the fourth quarter. They really upped the ante defensively, which then created some good offensive opportunities for them. I feel like we haven't seen the, the UC Caps in, in ages. It's only been two <laughs> weeks, but I, I'm looking forward to, to watching that game, the, both of those teams. Uh, no better stadium for my mind. There's bias there than Bendigo Stadium, and that's where the Bendigo Spirit will host uh, the Melbourne Boomers. So back-to-back -back games for the Boomers, but they come in ominous form, and the Bendigo Spirit are one and one, and they've recruited well uh, in the off-season, so they'll be much more competitive this year. Well, I would imagine that the Melbourne Boomers are going back for a little bit of redemption to Bendigo because Bendigo touched them up a few weeks ago and they lost that. And since then, they've won two and have been really impressive. So, I don't know, watch out Bendigo. <laughs> uh, well, this is what we're getting a glimpse of this season. It looks like it's really evenly balanced. And today, uh, 75 to 56 for the Townsville side that are looking to redeem themselves after losing the grand final last year but uh, they've got some really good imports that we've seen there there's a lot to be excited about from townsville and a lot to be excited about for the rest of the season laurie it's been great to spend a night with you thanks sam i've really enjoyed that game it was great to see to see sydney again um after not seeing them last week and townsville are just rolling on they're they're in good shape right now uh we really appreciate your company and your support of this wmbl broadcast a 75 to 56 19 point win to townsville a big thank you to you for joining us and have a great night. Make sure you stay safe. Until next time, good night.